to the Utah Puck Report. I know I don't sound like it, but I am Jay Stevens. Yeah. <laughs> what you do look like it. Show? Hey, it's uh, Gary Michaels over here, and uh, I don't have laryngitis, luckily. Yeah, I don't know how I got laryngitis, because I'm not sick. I feel 100% fine, hmm. and I just lost my voice. I don't, last week when we were here, I went in the other production room with Vaughn for two hours, huh. and he was showing me how to pronounce words differently. Oh. And I don't know if that's when I lost my voice. He messed you it, up. <laughs> it wasn't like he was making me sing or scream or anything. He was just making me say hmm. gunslinger ten different ways. <laughs> and next, that's So Vaughn is the, the guy that makes all the commercials for KSL, and he's amazing. And I thought I could learn something from him, and instead I just lost my voice. Yeah. This could be the new me. And let's hope not. Yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> all right, so today we have uh, a couple great guests with us. Uh, we have a guest host, uh, oh. hostess. Hostess. Brees Potter, the goaltender for the University of Utah women's hockey team. Brees? Thanks for having me on, Jay. I was never sure if I was saying that. I didn't like, like is Brees, I don't know if like the S was, was it Bree? It was just spelled fancy, but it is Brees, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm a simple guy. I don't know a lot of stuff. <laughs> and then uh, a long time friend of mine, I know I say that a lot, but man, we go back a long ways and we have some adventures together. Former Salt Lake Roller B, James Burdett. Whew. Current men's league killer, <laughs> <laughs> James. Thanks yes. for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. This um, is uh, cool. Uh, you know, we have it. We've talked a little bit about roller hockey in the past, and I've been and I've been wanting to get more into it. And like for a while there, me, you, Andy Gannon, Phil Snyder, like we lived and breathed roller hockey, and you had such a, a big history with it with the roller bees. So I wanted to kind of get to know you a little bit better and let everybody else in Salt Lake get to know you. Because it's funny, like when we will play together, and I'll tell people, I'll be like, they'll be like, "Oh, who's that guy?" I'm like, "Oh, you just play for the Roller Bees." And I'm like, "No, what are, who are the Roller Bees?" Or you know, whatever. Yeah. So I mean, there's a there's a history here that that uh, people should know about. And like Salt Lake Deck Hockey, that's where I met James. You know, yeah, because I started out playing roller hockey too. You know, so James, tell us about like how did you get into hockey? You were a late starter, right? I was a really late starter. Um, I started. I mean, I don't want to say this because it's gonna tell you how old i am but we used to skate behind a hardware store with the uh, the metal strap on skates nice wow and, uh, yeah in the late <laughs> late 70s uh with <clears throat> the cheap hockey sticks we'd buy at the roadrunner games and that's uh, that's kind of where it all started in phoenix wow that's awesome so i didn't know that anybody actually ever used those those strap on skates those tie down <laughs> whatever i think we just kind of ran on them i don't know if we really skated <laughs> it was yeah. more of a a running around thing, but um, you know, in Phoenix there wasn't a lot of ice at that time, so you know, roller hockey really kind of kind of filled that gap for a lot of people. Yeah. So, I, like, and this is when you're a little kid, right? Yep. Yep. This is younger, growing up. Then I got into playing soccer and and got a group of guys when rollerblades came out, and we used to rent skates and just go to any tennis court we could find that didn't have tennis players on it and throw some goals down and start playing. Yeah. Did you ever get kicked off those tennis courts? All the time. All the time. Right? All the time. Because <laughs> we, we used to do that here, too. Like, there was a park in, in Murray, and when we first got inline skates and we are like, going to Southwood Park, we'd get, like, 20 minutes of a game in, and then somebody would come kick us out, and then we'd have to go to some other park and then get kicked out of there. And I'm like, that's just not fair. We should be able to play. <laughs> so at what point, like, you're you're goofing around. At what point do you realize, like, I'm going to – did you, like, play in college? Or did, was the role of so, like, the first yeah. thing? <laughs> so – so we started playing on tennis courts, and you know we would like kind of like we bounced around until we found kind of our home tennis court, which was in a really <laughs> bad part of town in Phoenix, and nobody used it. So we'd play there, and and we would see other guys around just playing in basketball courts or tennis courts, kind of the same thing. And so we started finding other teams to play against. So um, so you'd have a home and home at some yeah, that's, tennis court somebody else's tennis court. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so we, you know, so we, we did that. Um, we met some guys out at ASU, started playing out at ASU, and then they put a roller hockey team together. This was probably eighty, maybe ninety, and uh, it was the uh, uh, ASU Blade Devils. And they would find teams in California, and I'd jump on with. I didn't go to ASU, but I'd jump on and, and make the trip with them. Oh yeah! And so we'd play in other other states and. Uh, and that was kind of just before the RHI started. Wow. And so, 
You're just paying. It's not even club hockey. It's like it wasn't sub sub club. <laughs> or, you know, just I think it was just a, a group of guys yeah. with with crummy t shirts. So and, uh, how do you go from that to being to making the roller bees? So they had a they had an open tryout in in Los Angeles, uh, and so we ten of us went to that, and they had a just kind of a draft there, and and they had scouts if you want to call them scouts. I mean, they were just guys watching. And it was at Luke Robitaille's place. Uh, I think it was the, the Isoplex. Yeah. And they had, a, they had a rink set up outside and um, just went there, skated, and apparently got noticed by somebody. I think they just took everybody's name and kind of threw them out there. And the teams <laughs> that <laughs> – the teams as they were coming up in the RHI just started grabbing players. Wow. So, so I got picked by San Diego – but came to came to Utah because the camp here was the week before the San Diego camp, and here I still am. So you just I, never left. Just never left. <laughs> just just stayed. <laughs> Love this place. Well, it's kind of funny. So I don't understand that part. So you you got picked up by San Diego. They didn't own you at that point. No. Right? So so Brent Meek was the coach here, and uh, Lenny Frigg was an assistant coach, and you know both of those names. Oh, yeah. And uh, so the second day of the the camp. Um, we were running a practice, and Brent called me over and said, "You know, hey, what are you, what are your plans? You know, or do you have to go back to Phoenix after this? You're sticking around, or what's the?" So I explained to him that I had been been picked by San Diego, and that I was heading to their camp after the Utah camp, and he said that uh, he wanted me to stay here. So uh, they finalized something. I don't know how. Probably gave him a half use roll of tape for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you were unofficially traded for. For <laughs> objects to be named later. That's right. <laughs> if anything, if anything. So yeah. So that was it, and it just kind of, uh, kind of morphed from there. Wow, that's cool. And it's, it's crazy because uh, you just happened into it, and then you just happened to be in a, it's a Salt Lake, and now that's your life, and you're still in it, like you, because you're a sport court guy now. Yep. So sport court. That's where I first saw sport court was at the tryouts in in L.A. They had the the court down. The, the surfacing down yeah. inside the mm-hmm. rink. It was outside, and I thought, you know, what is this? I thought we'd be skating in a parking lot. I mean, so um, turns out that uh, so Dan Kotler, the founder of Sport Court, owned the team. Yeah, and so uh, it just made sense, I guess, when the season ended that I stayed here and, <laughs> and worked for the that company. I wonder how amazing that was for them as far as marketing, because I had never yeah. seen Sport Court either, and. Then you got like when you got involved with it. I got a phone call from one of the Salt Lake coaches. Uh, I was playing junior college in North Dakota, and I got a phone call. And they're like, "Hey, uh, the Salt Lake Roller Bees own you now." And I'm like, "The what? I've never heard of any of this. <laughs> I have no idea what was going on. I don't want to be owned by them. Stop it." Yeah, I'm like, "Is this a real thing?" And then I came home, and this is the stuff. Like, this is the stuff I want to talk to you about because this was amazing. Because I went to one of the games. It might have been one of your first games here when I got home. Um, I had no intention of playing roller hockey, and I, w- I go to a game, and it's at the parking lot of the Southtown Mall. Yep. Outside, I, I have pictures of that. I still have pictures of that place. Yeah. Well, and you brought a magazine that has some pictures, too. And uh, I remember going, and, and as, a, as a Salt Lake kid growing up, and I walk out, and I look out, and there's Rich Chernomaz, who like I idolized growing up here, right? And Chernomaz is out there, and Paul Cruz. And the Harkins. Harkins. Brett and Todd and Brett Harkins. Yeah, the Harkins brothers Skidmore. were out there. And then Paul Skidmore. And then come to find out, that's how the Salt Lake Roller Bees even found out who I was, is Paul Skidmore gave him a list of, like, local kids that he knew he had worked with. So I think, like, Jimmy Kilpatrick, um, Brian Larson. There were some other goalies that they were – they needed other goalies just in case. And they were just calling guys. And I don't, I don't even think they knew anything about me. They're just like, hey – we own you because you're from Utah or whatever. You just need guys that will show up with goalie gear. You're a Utah. Yeah. But it, was, it looked so cool. I don't, I don't know what the fans were like. I don't know. I cannot remember how many. How many do you think you guys were getting? Thousands. No, I don't know. Maybe. H- hundreds of thousands or hundreds. Maybe, yeah, that's right. or, or hundreds. Hundreds of fifties. Hundreds of fifties. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what, 1,500 to 4,500 maybe? Yeah. Maybe. That sounds about right. And it got, cool. well, it got to the point where they're like, hey, we're going to put it at the Salt Palace. Was it the Salt Palace? Or was no, it, it was at Delta Center. Delta Center. Oh, it was newer than I thought it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're like, all right, we're going to play them out of the Delta Center. And I saw, so I saw two games. And at both games, it turned into chaos. 
And both times it was because of Rich Cherno Miles. Rich Cherno went flying into the opposing team bench. Yeah, which, was that at the? That was a, that was at the Delta. Center. That was at the Delta. Center. Yeah. So that was that was the second game I went to, and Cherno Miles went into the opposing team's bench yeah, to just, fight somebody. Just went flying in there. Just went fly. Yeah, we went flying into the into the bench, and I don't remember what led up to it. I think there was some chirping back and forth, and I think at some point Cherno told the kid on the other team that he'd autograph his skates for him or something like that, and. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it just yeah. just devolves from there. And, okay, so um, how much preparation in those uh, tennis court games had you had to fight NHL fighters? <laughs> because there were <laughs> NHL fighters on those teams. Oh, well, you know, Vancouver had Sasha Lakovic. Oh man, that was a he was a beast. He was, and he just wanted. I think he just wanted to kill people. I, I don't. Even, <laughs> I have a Sasha Lakovic well. story, and I ha- do you remember Bill Miller? Bill the Hammer Miller. He was a fighter in the league too. I don't know if you remember him. Mm-mm, mm-mm. All right, so now it gets into Major League Roller Hockey later. But um, All right, so you guys play Roller ho- Hockey International, and now you are you went from tennis courts to fight. To, tennis to, courts to, yeah, standing out there thinking, I have no reason to be out here. In fact, when I when I told one of the guys I worked with that, that I had introduced to hockey, I said, yeah, I'm going to go to these tryouts. And he said, you're going to get killed. I don't even know why you're going. And <laughs> I just thought, why not? I mean, it was, yeah. it's hockey. It sounds like fun. I mean, it's just, you don't know them. They should try it. Yeah. So, um, you know, then coming back and saying, like, yeah, you know, I got picked up. And he said, well, I'll believe it when you lace them up and then get out there and start skating. And <laughs> didn't see him again because I didn't go home. I just stayed here. <laughs> uh, so I think I remember one time playing with you. I think we were in uh, in Vegas or Phoenix or something. And uh, it was during – I don't remember even what was going on. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it was you. I could be wrong. You can correct me because I'm wrong all the time. But – you were like, you were going for a puck, and the guy lifted your stick or whatever, and and you were sitting there talking, and you're like, man, I was, I knew he was going to come lift my stick, and so I prepared for it, but he prepared for me to prepare for it, and he's like, these guys are next level stuff. They, they he knew what I was going to do before I knew what I was going to do, but there's definitely that level because oh. you're playing against guys that are drafted NHL, and for some reason they're like, hey, four hundred extra dollars. A week to go play during the summer in roller hockey? Let's be generous. Uh, yeah, and that's, you know, that's... When the check's cleared. Well, yeah, with, exactly. So some of the guys on the team, you know, when they when Brent had called me over the one practice the second day and kind of asked me what was going on and plan on sticking around, uh, went back and the guys on the bench, hey, you know, what what coach say to you? And I told him. And half the guys, like, shut down at that point. When they realized oh, they're making picks right now. They're saying who's going to stay through the next round. They couldn't skate. It's like they forgot what they were doing. Really? And really? Yeah, it's these guys. And Cherno intimidated so many of them. You know, when he, even when he ran a practice, some of the guys said, man, when Cherno steps in and starts barking, I, I freeze up. Yeah. I'm like, go skate. I mean, just play. Yeah. So it, yeah, well, it was too nice for you not knowing who Cherno was. Well, that's because <laughs> he scared the right. crap out of me yep. too. And again, I idolized him, but I was also just scared to death of him. His legs were like tree trunks, oh, man. He was so intimidating. You ever seen him play basketball? No, it's hilarious. Is it? I mean, it's amazing, but it's hilarious. No, it is. It's bas- a lot of hockey players. Maybe, maybe just the ones I know can't play basketball. There's no arc on the shot. Yeah, and Art and and Cherno would jump and just fire the basketball at the backboard. <laughs> And it just rock it right off of there. Oh, we need to get some video of this. I oh, think it's hilarious. I would have loved to have seen it. Probably a good golfer though. Well, yeah. Hopefully. But yeah, you look up and see him coming towards you on the on, on at the rink, and uh, yeah, it was. You could tell it was a different level at yeah. that point. <laughs> well, and it was so my the second year of the RHI, which was my first year of RHI, and then you and me and Andy Gannon got prepared and went to Vegas together. But we were doing a lot of like getting ready for it and then we all went down there and that was one of the first practices like Cherno was out there and so I went from playing in junior college in North Dakota to, from a bunch of guys you never heard of to playing against like again being a Salt Lake guy Rich Chernomaz was the Eagles in my mind and I know guys before that were Lyle Bradley or whatever but you know my age group it was it was Chernomaz and Lassard yeah, yeah and, was, and Lassard oh man I forgot he was out there yeah Again, an NHL fighter. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mean guy. Nicest guy in the world off the ice. Super nice guy. But, yeah, so it was it was crazy to go out there and play with them. And then um, I was pretty comfortable. I was pretty excited to stay there. And then that, there an article came out in the, like, in, 
actual hockey magazine. This was back when they had magazines. Brees, have you ever heard of a magazine? Oh, yeah. Does your age group know what a magazine is? We had many subscriptions. <laughs> nice. Well, back in the day. So, like, the hockey news said something about career, le- ca- career minor leaguer Rich Chernomaz leading a bunch of unknowns and talked about me possibly being the starting goalie. And it said, so leading a bunch of unknowns like goaltender Jay Stevens. <laughs> so that hurt. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then the next day, Cherno traded me. And they're like, all right, you're off to Phoenix. And I was like, what? like that sucked. My I, name's in him, print. Yeah, we had him on the show, and I wanted to ask him about that. Because I wondered if it was because of that article or if I was already on my way out. And they brought in some other guy that they that they had known. I don't remember where you ended up that year. I ended up back in Utah getting married. The league has its issues or whatever. Um, I'm on a... I'm on a road trip with Phoenix in L.A., and my paycheck bounces. And I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't have any money to eat. You were supposed to give us money for food today. Um, what, what's the deal? They're like, yeah, we're not sure. We'll get back to you. So we go from the rink back to the hotel, and all of our stuff is outside of our rooms because they didn't pay the hotel bill either. So, like, they didn't even put stuff in suitcases. They just, like, your clothes and everything just out. Of the room, just sitting on the handrail You're or just whatever. living the dream, man. Yeah. Living the dream, aren't you? <laughs> and it was, I was with a friend of yours that you knew from Phoenix at the time. And I can't remember who he was. was Matt Malik, maybe? Maybe. I can't remember. But And then there was another goalie. And I'm looking at this guy, and I'm like, hey, I don't – my car is in Phoenix. I don't know how what we're going to do. And, they're like, and I ended up having to hitch a ride – borrow 40 bucks from an ex-girlfriend that lived in California because <laughs> I had zero money for food and uh, we didn't have cell phones back then either so I'm like I only know one phone number in California and it happens to be this girl I used to date so I call her I'm like hey uh, you have some money so of course that makes me a hero there too but so um, RHI kind of goes away and then we get involved with Major League Roller Hockey what, what did you do with that? So with Major League I remember you know, talking to you a little bit and uh, reaching out to Bill Rowey. And I can't remember where he was, back east Denver, somewhere. I think. Oh, no, no, he was in, he he was was in New York somewhere. or Buffalo, I think. And was all excited, said, put a team together. And the guys that I skated with in Boise were, you know, some of the some of the old steelheads. Um, Marco Pietranero, yeah. Troy Edwards, Scott Davis, and uh, Bart Hull uh, was there. The tinfoil rocket. Yep. <laughs> but he, uh, but he came out and they said, "Yeah, let's put a team together and let's, let's, let's play." So, and that's when you guys were here. We had a team from Denver come in and and uh, did that for a few months. But it seemed that too much. Like if you if you had a team, you had to support yourself. Yep. Yeah, we ended up paying our own dues, and we were supposed to have uh, again. Sport Court was going to come through and sponsor some of it, and. Uh, they were on the on the tab for ten grand, which I thought would get us through the season, and then I think they saw that the league was not going to work, so they gave us a grand, <laughs> which got our jerseys, I think, and uh, and maybe a couple games. But yeah, it was a lot of fun, though. I mean, that was cool, and we did have some big players, and we had some good fun with it. And then, you know, it's always cool when you have Brett Hull's brother. <laughs> I, I have a story about that too. Have you heard the credit card story? Uh uh-uh. uh All right, so. Bart Hull kind of was an adventure and maybe wasn't living up to expectations like his brother. You know what I mean? But um, there's this, I'm I'm hearing him, I think it was at the hotel and he's arguing with, with Brett and I, you, it's loud enough that you can hear both sides of the conversation (laughs) and Brett's going, um, Brett's ripping on Bart because they rented a car while they were in Salt Lake and took it to the great Salt Lake and took it on the beach and beached it. <laughs> and so I can hear Brett saying, they charged the whole car to mom's, to, or the whole car's on mom's card. Like, they, that's that's ten grand on mom's card. you got to come up, like, go get the car back. Because they, they told the car. It was, like, covered in Great Salt Lake yeah. Beach. Oof. They couldn't get it off the beach. And so they just, yeah, so I think Brett Holt bought, like, an Enterprise rental car that day. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, that's the kind of stuff Bart was doing. And that he was, it was entertaining. Because he was with the Idaho Steelheads too, like yeah. you said, and I, I got to be with. I think that might have been with, what it was, and maybe it wasn't. But 
Um, I know it was a great Salt Lake. So I was, I was when I think of the holes, I always wonder about that. Yeah, he was funny. And the thing about the major league was, you know, RHI was fu- was full contact. Yeah. And the major league was no open eyes hits, but you could hit into the boards. Mm-hmm. And Bart thought it was no contact. And I remember one of these tall goons from Denver just just trucking him from behind into the boards. And he had no idea it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy came to me after the game. He said, I feel bad. He said, after I hit him, I saw him look up at me, and I realized when it, the look in his eyes that he had no idea that it was contact. <laughs> so, yeah. Tears well, in his eyes. You were guessing a lot on a lot of the rules. Because, um, you know, it changed from... Well, it changed from ref to ref, too, because we didn't really have, like, a rule book. Yep. And we were just kind of winging it. Hmm. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And we had, I think a lot of people here had good experiences with it. And, again, we ran games out of Salt Lake Deck Hockey, so probably 20 fans, 25 fans. Screaming fans. Though. We made the news. Yeah. I remember we were on the news and stuff, and that was good times. <laughs> so uh, now what are you up to? So now I'm uh, back here still still working with Sport Court. Um playing just rec league as yeah. much as I can. But yeah. almost hung up the skates after I had my shoulder surgery, which has seems to you hear surgery stories as guys get older. Yeah. Uh but you know, got back on the ice playing out at Provo and playing out at the Oval. And you work full time for Sport Court and um I'm wondering how many people are ordering sport courts to play hockey? Is it always just basketball and tennis or do you have people that are like, hey we want to be able to play hockey too? You know, it's it's the majority of it now is pickleball, which yeah. is what? crazy. Yeah. I know. But, you know, it's it's basketball and, and tennis and, and volleyball. The the inline hockey here in Utah, it's other than the, the two rinks they play at, there's no Narch term. I mean, the, the nationwide, it's still huge. Yeah. yeah. And it's crazy. You know, I, a lot of my friends' kids are playing, and they have some, there's some quality tournaments. And some, yeah. some great teams. And I got to say this name oh. carefully. Michael Hunt also plays. Do you remember Michael? He was so he was an RHI guy back east, and then he was like one of the big guys for Rink Rat. And then um, he's pimping a stick right now to Tovu. I don't know. It's got a bunch of holes in the blade. And uh, I'm, I'm friends with him on Facebook and Kelly Askew, and they're still playing in these huge tournaments and bringing in huh. big money. Winning big tournaments and playing for like Team Canada against Team US, and then playing um, like for La Beta and yeah. stuff like that. So all the big name brands are still out there, and somehow Utah just fell off the market. They did, and it's 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 crazy to see how big it is still outside of here. And I wish mm. it would get that foothold here again. Yeah, the, the leagues that are here seem to be sold out. Like when I talk to them and try to to you know do stories for KSL Sports, they seemed they seem to be packed. So I wonder if maybe we had a facility. If we could, if we could support it and make it grow, it seems like we could. We yeah, talk, we talk to your buddies over there at Sport Court. Let's get a let's get a little warehouse hey. together. We got to find the warehouse first. <laughs> I can find a warehouse. Find a warehouse. We find mm. a warehouse. We can do the rest. But yeah, it's it seems you know the teams that are here out at uh, you know the Bountiful, and even the one that's in uh, Taylorsville, they're full. You know, they yeah. have, they have uh, a lot of participation, and I just think that. You know, it's just not really tapped here, but nobody has a big enough facility. All right. That, that's exactly right. Because we've talked about that over the years. Huh. You know, it's like if we could get a bigger facility and something that you could manage and that you could have more than just hockey on it, it'd be great. Yeah. And that's and that's the thing is you really have to make it multi-sport. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's too bad that you have to make it multi-sport. I'd like to see something that could just facilitate hockey, but maybe we'll, we have to take one step at a time. That's right. And I know Dave Lamps, and I know a lot of the, like, he had tons of leagues going in there, but a lot of the times guys just weren't paying their bills. And at some point, the real estate becomes more valuable than guys not paying their bills. <laughs> so before we go, I want, I want you to what, tell me, looking back, what stands out as some of the craziest stuff you saw playing roller hockey? Because there were some crazy things. There was some crazy things. You know, and I think you touched on it with with Cherno was that, was that, <laughs> that fight out at uh, – at Southtown yeah. with, with Sasha. And, uh, you know, when you have a coach, I mean, a coach was Tiger Williams. Yeah. So it's not like he's going to hold back on anything. It was all goon. Like it was, 
And that was the one where you had fans, the, the one fan that jumped over the boards and grabbed, I think he Dennis. grabbed Sasha Lokovic. Yeah, so. Dennis so, Nazar. Yeah, so Sasha, <laughs> it's funny because the game wasn't really going as planned. We weren't doing so so great. And Gary Jones, Quay manager, had just lined up all these cups on this table with water. And the team comes in there, and uh, and I think it was Todd Harkins comes in and just starts just starts tearing into the team, grabbing his jersey. This is pride. What are we doing? And flips the table. <laughs> and Gary just had this look of horror like, what? I, that took me like <laughs> hours to fill those cups up. And yeah. I remember one of the players, Reggie Talkington, maybe weighed 100 and – I think the program says 150 pounds, maybe weighed 110 he was under the table, just soaked. <laughs> and Todd is just, just tearing everybody up. And the next the next period was when uh, was when the fight broke out. Oh wow! And Todd told everybody, he said, "I thought I was done for." He said, "I thought I'd look up and nobody was going to stand up for me after yelling at you guys." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but um, yeah, I remember Gary. Gary opens the gate and and bodies just started filing out of there. Vince clearing brawl. <laughs> yeah, but he did. Rocky International, the South, South Town parking lot. Yeah. Yep. But that's when Sasha was in the box, and Dennis grabbed his suspenders yeah. from behind. Dennis it was a bad idea. Yeah, it was a bad idea. Like he's the, those guys learn to fight. They're good fighters. There's a reason they're going to the NHL to fight on the on the on the uh, the the roster that that Dave uh, turned in. It said that uh, he was their designated pit bull. Didn't even have a position next to his name. <laughs> designated pit bull. That was it. Hmm. So, but uh, yeah, that was that was probably the the craziest. I mean. It was just yeah. unreal. That just those were the two games I saw. The one at the Dell <laughs> Center, the one at where you guys had the bench clear, and it was so much fun to watch. Man, I'd love to see that stuff come back, and it was fun to watch you. How did you end up doing? Did you get to play most of the games and get some points? No, uh, you know, it didn't play a ton. You know, you, you practiced a lot, skated a lot. Yeah, but you had, you know, when you had guys like the Lassards and right. And, it's drafted NHL guys. Yeah. And so, you, you know, you tried to jump in, but you mostly were along for the ride. I mean, that was the, that's the beauty of it is, is even though it was kind of this crazy dream that I went after. And even after I would tell people, yeah, I'm going to play roller, roller hockey. They'd say roller derby. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wouldn't even go on after that. But, you know, that was it. It just the love of the sport and, and chasing that kind of bizarre dream. Yeah. Have you thought about roller derby though? <laughs> you give it a go? Maybe. Yeah, so I said 400 a week. Tell me what kind of money you were pulling down back then. Oh, we were rolling in, I think it was 318 a week, 318 bucks a yeah, week. Yeah, I thought that was about what it was. You got like $30 when you went on the road yep. a day for, for food. and People ask me all the time, and I, I don't remember. I remember not getting paid most of the time. I remember checks bouncing, and that's with yes. RHI and Major League Roller Hockey. And then the Pro Beach thing was another – Pro Beach. We used to watch that. We'd watch that. We had two condos. The team stayed in two condos up on uh, just off of Wasatch. Yeah. And so we'd watch some of those games and, and laugh about it. Yeah. Well, they portrayed it to be one thing when it was completely another. Yeah. Like we played awesome all the games in like two weekends and you'd play it tournament style and you'd play like, you know, you could see if you went back to watch them, you'd watch one game end and you could see the teams, the next two teams lined up at the gate to come in. <laughs> really? Because you just played like four games in two days, and then you came back the next weekend, played four games in two days, and that was it. Got a thousand bucks, and then they played it on ESPN two like for four months, like it was a regular season. Yeah, oh, but yeah. we played it all within. It was like a ninety-six hour tournament over two weeks. Was there another league that was going on then as well? I don't remember. What was the, What was the Disney league? Oh, I don't know if a Disney league. There was a at Disney really? World. There was a league at Disney World. Oh, really? And I'm trying to think of what it was. Because this remember. Was, Pro Beach was at Huntington Beach, and that's where I got uh, V-form skates, which were fun. <laughs> and then I ended up using those in Major League Roller Hockey. <laughs> and then uh, the Franklin Mask. And they had a, they had a two-point line. Remember right. that? That's and it was right. curved behind the net. So you yep. couldn't go and stop behind oh, the yeah. net. It was yep. curved up. Yeah, had a ramp back there. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. It was crazy, Dom. And the first game, the first weekend, they for some reason they had they froze the balls. So they kept them in a bucket of ice, and they had a little gel center or something. And when it froze, it had an air pocket in it. So when they shot it, it was like a knuckleball. It was like a 90-mile-an-hour knuckleball coming at you that just had so much movement. We were talking about you playing goalie and how crazy the balls moved back then. Yep. But, man, when it was 
when it was like frozen. I don't know why they did it, but man, it it had some crazy movement to it. Well, man, I think we should do it. I think we got whoever's out there that has a warehouse that wants to get in touch with us. We should put together some uh, some yeah. sport court and some boards and get some it, roller hockey back, going. Man. I know the two leagues that are out there are on a smaller surfaces. I'd love to see some good four on four or five on five roller hockey. That's not. Let's get the gang back together. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's get the boys back <laughs> together because I think it's so great for kids. It is, and you don't have to pay the ice. You know, ice is expensive, 200 bucks an hour, and you don't need all the equipment, maybe gloves and a stick. And I think it's just, I think roller hockey is a great introduction to the game. And, and you know, it's so much fun. And even if it's not your introduction, even if it's what you do, like, I I would love to still play roller hockey all the time. Mm, Oh, me too. There's just no way of taking my pads out on the floors that are out there right now. No, it's it's a lot of fun. And, And like I said, there's some great tournaments out there. And there's college teams. Like, now they're legit. Yeah. College teams. Like I said, not a bunch of guys with poorly made t-shirts right like legit teams and it would be great to see here again yeah it, it would be is there any uh, can-am roller hockey tournaments we can look into here you know what let's look into it <laughs> i don't know if any of them but we can look into it all right james james burdett uh it's it's great having you in here thanks for bringing your daughter she's been i hope she's learned learned something i know she's gonna be a hockey player right well, that, thanks for having me yeah i'd love to get her out there so maybe, perfect maybe we will all right. Right on. Yeah, man. Good to see you again. You too. All right. That is the Utah Puck Report. Yeah,